seeing the trench warfare come to life and getting the chance to rewrite history as we know it, I think that's really cool. Our aim with the campaign was to provide a real sense of being there and making the most important decisions around World War I. The campaign in the Great War Western Front uh, allows the player to make choices on how they might play out history if they were involved in it. Deciding how you want to play out the war. Would you have attacked Verdun first? Would you have delayed and tried to go around the southern part of it? Or would you focus more on the northern part? Would you try to be defensive or would you try to be offensive? You can play as either the Allied Nations or the Central Powers in the campaign. And this gives the player a really unique way to play through history or redefine it. As the Allied Nations, you have access to the whole host of countries that were involved from that side. The Allied Nations consists of different countries and different nationality bonuses. Um, this gives them access to different types of units and different types of bonuses to their actual units. For example, the French troops are cheaper to produce because they're fighting in France, so you don't have to worry about shipping troops over. The Canadians get bonuses from their smoke barrages and stuff like that. And the Americans get bonuses from tanks. So if you bring in a bunch of tanks, the Americans get more morale to them. One of the challenges that the player faces when playing the Allied Nations is something we call unity of command. And what that means is when you have multiple commanders from multiple different countries issuing orders, uh, that's not going to be as effective as if you let each country fight as a single unit. One of the advantages of the Central Powers is that they're all one nation working together. This allows them to access more different unique troops, such as conscripts, um, to make up for the nationality bonuses. They all speak the same language, they're all under command of the same general, and that makes them very efficient, very deadly at the beginning of the war. As a theater commander, uh, you take control over the Western Front and how you move your forces around. So, controlling your economy, controlling how your troops are deployed across the entire campaign map, dealing with research and the purchase of vehicle troops, such as tanks and aircraft. If you want to have a tactical battle, you need supply. Everything that's uh, purchased at the battlefield level is all supply. Supply does not accumulate over time. You have to buy that with gold reserves. So managing the gold reserve to supply ratio is really key to uh, doing well in the game. As the theater commander, the player will earn research points throughout the campaign. There's multiple ways the player can earn these research points, either on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, through events that happen throughout the campaign, as well as through objectives the player completes. These research points are then used in the tech tree to progress. The tech tree is basically used to increase your abilities, your power, your options when playing the game. The tech tree is broken down into several different types of branches, flight, engineering, infantry, and others. And these allow the player to decide how they want to wage war. For example, the player could use a lot of flight technology and get more advanced aircraft out. But this might be at the cost of their defenses on the battlefield. You can certainly unlock things in the same order as the Allied Nations or Central Powers did through history, but you're not limited to doing that. You can play however you want to. And the player has to manage uh, this concept we call national will. National will represents the troops' willingness to fight, as well as their families' uh, fatigue back home. We also have uh, historic and headline events which deal with real world, things that happened in other parts of the war that you wouldn't necessarily see in the uh, Western Front, but it might have happened in, in like, you know, Gallipoli or the Russian Front. The player may also be faced with hard choices. Uh, these are the kind of choices where the player will have an A or B option, and the option the player chooses can have a significant impact on the progression of the campaign. Because World War I was a battle of inches, you don't necessarily need an overwhelming victory in every battle. Just being able to hold the line is a great way to achieve a victory in itself. We're really excited to give you this more in-depth look into the campaign, and we're looking forward to revealing more in the future.